Welcome back, I'm The Watch King. On this video, we are gonna compare two watches, one Seiko, one Rolex. Uh, we're gonna compare the case, quality, even the movement, all the way down to that. What is, is it really worth it to pay, you know, 10 times more for a Rolex? Or is the Seiko more of a value? Both of these were from the 70s and 80s. This is gonna be a really fun video. So without further ado, let's hop straight into Jumping it. Jumping right into it, we have these two beautiful pieces. We're going to start with the similarities here. So both of them have these older type fold over bracelets, right? These are on the Seiko. This is a donor. Believe it or not, this is from a Seiko quartz. It says it right there. So I put this bracelet on. That's why the end piece doesn't show perfectly um, or should the end link is more of an integrated. Um, this is not a quartz watch as we can see here. It's moose sweeping, um, but this is what I used as the donor one. So as you can see, fold over, um, pretty cool. The crown is uh, down here, but we'll get into the differences in a second. Blue dial, uh, and uh, we'll get back to the rest of this. So let's go over to the Rolex right now for the bracelet. The bracelet is actually very similar. Fold over construction. Now, of course, this model is bimetal, so this is all 14 karat solid gold, uh, but the actual system is a lot easier. Uh, this is not the earlier system. You, as you can see, there's pins. That's the way you size it. So it is a lot, um, as I should say, it's a lot easier to, to size. Rolex made an effort right here to, to do that. So, But the construction is basically the same, right? It's a uh, fold-over link. Very raggedy, as both of them are. They're not very tight. Um, but that's also because of the wear on both of these bracelets, right? Uh, Seiko, not so much. I think they're more, they're bend easier, but Rolex, especially these 14 karat ones, bend so easily, uh, the USA made bracelets. So um, that, that covers that. So coming to the dial, uh, the construction. So the first thing I always look at, companies cut costs with the crystal. Now this crystal is actually flat. So you might be mistaken when it's perfect. It might be a sapphire, it is not sapphire, of course. Uh, these watches were made for the affordability, uh, so they put just regular window glass, mineral glass in, and it is something awful. If you look at this piece, it is just not, not the thing. If you catch it in the light, there's scratches everywhere. I don't know the real benefit of mineral glass. It shatters like sapphire, and it shows scratches like Hesalite. Don't know why they didn't just go with Hesalite, not sure but that's their choice. Um, but the dial itself, if you can look past the scratches, isn't half too bad. It's got a sunburst, dark blue dial. Um, it looks like they are, looks like they're applied, but most likely they're punched, the actual um, markers. That's how they did, did it very cheaply, but it's possible they applied them, right? So I don't wanna know, I don't wanna get into it too deep because I'm not the expert here on, on Seiko, right? Um, but let me know if you're the expert on Seiko, on the Seiko Automatic 17 Jewels. Are they applied or are they punched through? I know that's a method, too, to make it look like they're applied. But they really do look applied. It's not half bad. There's a date window. On top of that, there's a day and date function, both quick set, right? So um, as you can see here, Sunday in red and easy, easy access there. Pull the crown out all the way. There's no hacking in this movement. And we'll get to hacking in a second because this, this puppy has it. So it's just basically the sweep of the second hand. It doesn't stop. It's actually pretty rough. Uh, it's just hard with this crown and the gloves on. I don't know why they put the crown at the four o'clock. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, I like it at three. Most people do. Don't know why Seiko put so many of them like that. 17 jewels. Uh, and let's let's turn around and look at that movement. So it says Jap Japan movement. Here's all the information, serial numbers. You know, it explains the reference 6309. So you can see that. And then 9009 is the, the separate. Uh, it's all part of the reference number there. Um, stainless steel. Yeah, so one, one props, it's all stainless steel 316L, which is industry standard, by the way. Rolex used that, uh, especially during the time period of my watch here. So opening it up, it doesn't look half bad. You can see in here, uh, it's running actually pretty okay, right, for a Seiko movement. It's not, you know, chronometer. It says, if you look closely, let's see if we can get it uh, here, but I'll just read it to you. It says 1031 
86. So I might have been, uh, I should say, serviced on the October of 86. Uh, time and order, Singapore. Seiko Time Corp, Singapore. So this watch per was made in Singapore. That's what it says on the case back. The gaskets have been redone as recently. Um, or maybe the watchmaker didn't put the service in. But yeah, this is something... It's got that rotor. Almost looks like it's smaller. I like that look of the rotor being smaller. As you can see, it's not a free-sprung balance. It has the uh, axe there and, and the adjustments and all that. And we'll get into that with Rolex because that, that's not the way. Um, but not half bad for a few hundred dollar watch. I don't know what it cost back in the day. Um, the parts aren't bad. There are some plastic parts, especially the ring around it. Uh, so it's not definitely not a perfect movement. Uh, but as you can see, it's not half bad, right? To look at a movement, uh, really not not horrible at all. I mean, I'm surprised this watch is from uh, 1986. That's what it says there, 10-31-86. So yeah, pretty surprised um, that it's working so well, right? So let's pop the crown in and we will screw this back in. Um, and then we'll, we'll head to the Rolex here. So screw in this one puppy and let's take a look at the differences of quality here. So jumping in here, this is the Datejust, right? Something similar around this time period. This is a Quickset Datejust. So this is a 16013. Just look at the polishing itself, right? The depth, the crystal. Uh, I don't even want to talk about the precious metals added uh, into it because I, I guess that's not fair because well anyway the the Seiko would have been plated so that that putting even the precious metals aside the quality the crown itself the function of the screw down crown is amazing right for a sports watch uh, and Seiko's pride themselves on these being a sports watch but definitely nothing compared to this Rolex uh, it doesn't have to be a sports watch right it's two-toned you can definitely have it not so wine's perfect the setting pull it out all the way, it actually hacks. So you see that second hand stop, that's so you can get accurate time uh, when you're timing things. You, especially back in the day, you needed accurate time. Pulling the crown out to the first position, you actually can set the date quick set, right? Which the Seiko also had, I have to give credit for there. So um, very easy. And then uh, what, something with the Seiko, which I showed at the very beginning, if, you paid attention or if, if you were paying attention to that is that it takes a long time for it to go from the day to the next here it's instantaneous right at midnight as you can see there too uh, the adding of tritium is very nice i believe they have loom there but it's it might be even super luminova no i believe it's tritium also i could be mistaken um because it patinaed very much like tritium so i believe they both use tritium but um, as you can see here, very sparsely used compared to Rolex. As you, the loom plots are pretty pretty solid there. And screwing the crown in, um, we already actually... Look at, look at like how nice this is. This is just... The polishing is, is something excellent, right? Um, but turning it around, this is the, the, the showstopper here. I mean, I already loosened it. There we go. It's coming out. Yeah. So we already... Loosen this puppy up to show you. So popping the case back off, looking at this movement, you can tell it's a miles, million miles ahead. This free sprung balance with the blue uh, hairspring is incredible. Uh, this is not even the newest or, or the second newest. This is a 3035, 70s type movement, uh, 70s and 80s. Incredible. This is the same movement like American Psycho he wore and a bunch of other famous things but look how just incredibly well it's done these the the quality of it is insane but also we're going to get into it at the end uh just the 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 value of passing something down from generation to generation knowing that you can always make this watch work is just incredible so there is the rolex movement let's tighten this up before any dust gets in there um, or anything that we don't want to be in there gets in there. So let's tighten this thing up. I'll be right back in the outro. In conclusion, I think that there is a place for the Seiko. There's nothing wrong with buying a Seiko, especially if it's one of your first watches uh, in this vintage era. But definitely 
the just the generational the the point that if your Rolex breaks, you're gonna fix it. If that Seiko breaks, it's cheaper to buy another vintage Seiko. Uh, that's just a fact. So unfortunately, that's why, in my opinion, the Rolex is so much better than Seiko, and I think that's why they have a very hard reputation uh, to get over, right, with their Grand Seikos, because people don't think of Seiko as a brand to really service their watch, uh, and that's just because of the affordability of it, the plastic movements back in the day. So they're trying to go into luxury, and yes, more people are getting educated about it. We're not gonna get in that whole debate, but if you market your brand as a very affordable, very cheap watch, people will you know, tend to uh, gravitate and, and just know that that's what it is. So I don't know why Grand Seiko uh, kept the Seiko name. They could have had another name and that's a whole nother debate. Uh, but I wanna thank you all for watching. Let me know what you would choose. Do you think it's worth it? The Rolex for so much more. And I even know that the Rolex is not a full, like it's not a high horology movement, but they're made so well. There's nothing else better than that. So thank you. And I will definitely catch you in the next one. Have a great day.